we're asked to determine the value of x, which would be the length of this segment here. To determine this length, we'll be using the properties of parallel lines, as well as the properties of similar triangles. So analyzing the diagram, notice how these two angles have the same measure, they're both A degrees. And these two angles are corresponding angles given these two segments cut by this transversal. So because these two corresponding angles are congruent, we know these two segments must be parallel. So this segment is parallel to this segment here. And notice how these two parallel segments are also cut by this transversal, and therefore these two corresponding angles must also be congruent. So this angle is congruent to this angle here. Now notice how we also have two triangles here. We have this large triangle, and we also have this small triangle. Now notice how these two triangles have two angles that are congruent to one another, and therefore by angle-angle similarity, these two triangles are similar to each other. And whenever we have similar triangles or similar polygons, corresponding sides are proportional, which means we can determine the length of this segment here by setting up a proportion comparing corresponding sides. So comparing the two triangles, notice how this side of the large triangle corresponds to this side of the small triangle, which means we can set up a ratio stating x is to six and two-thirds as, now looking at these sides of the two triangles, notice how this side of the large triangle corresponds to this side of the small triangle, and notice how the length of this side of the large triangle is nine, the length of this side of the small triangle is five, and therefore the second ratio is going to be nine to five. So again, this side of the large triangle corresponds to this side of the small triangle, giving us the ratio of x to six and two thirds, and then this side of the large triangle corresponds to this side of the small triangle, giving us a second ratio of nine to five. Notice how to obtain the nine, we had to add the five and the four. Now that we have a proportion, we can cross multiply and solve for x. So x times five must equal six and two thirds times nine. So x times five would be five x equals, again, six and two thirds times nine. For the next step, we'll write six and two thirds as an improper fraction. So we'd have a denominator of three and the numerator is going to be three times six plus two. Three times six is 18, 18 plus two is 20. So six and two thirds equals 20 thirds. And then we have times nine, which will write as nine over one. Now still simplifying the right side, we're going to simplify before multiplying. Notice how three and nine share a common factor of three. There's one three and three and three threes and nine. So now we have five x equals, multiplying on the right, the numerator is 20 times three or 60, and the denominator is one times one or one, 60 over one is just 60. So now solving for x, we divide both sides by five, and we now know the value of x is 60 divided by five, which equals 12. So because x equals 12, we know the length of this side of the larger triangle is 12 units. I hope you found this helpful.